students coming to next problem so i write the question a precious concrete beam is simply supported over a 10 meter span the beam carries a uniformly distributed load of 5 kN per meter okay 60 percentage of the load which is non permanent okay so this point is very very important student 60 percentage of the load is non permanent so only 40 percentage of the load only permanent okay the eccentricity is 100 mm within the middle third of the span okay so you have to segregate the span into three parts so that 10 meter span into three parts and that that middle part having 100 mm eccentricity and varies linearly from third points to zero at the support that means at the support the cable is eccentricity is zero okay at middle eccentricity is 100 mm the tendon area is 400 mm square and the effective pristress is 1400 newton per mm square so here you can see they given area and stress they didn't give force precessing force okay we know the formula precessing force is equal to stress into area okay so that was 1400 into 400 mm square okay so next the sectional details area 5.5 into 10 power 4 mm square so they given area that means area of the cross section of the beam and also they didn't given the size of the beam breadth depth not given okay next moment of inertia 5 into 10 power 6 mm power 4 and x moles of concrete 35 kN per mm square and x moles of steel 210 kN per mm square so you can see all the values are given in mm only so no need to convert anything okay so for the uh, deflection unit is mm so we have to substitute all the values in terms of mm only next so how to calculate precessing force as i already told stress into area okay so here area is 400 and stress is 1400 newton per mm square okay so 400 into 1400 we got a uh 560 into 10 power 3 newton okay so we need the values in terms of kilo newton so therefore 560 into 10 power 3 divided by 1000 this is the 1000 that purpose only that means i converting newton into kilo newton so therefore 560 kilo newton okay so now draw the diagram you can see here uh this is the middle third okay so this 10 meter is divided into three parts so at middle 100 mm eccentricity and from the third point this is third point is zero point zero point is nothing but the support point it is varying linearly linear means straight line it is varying straight line and uh, it is concentric okay that means the centroid of the beam and the centroid of centroid of the cable both are equal so the amount of Precessing force. Just now we calculated by 60 kN. So that only we have to provide here. Okay. So this is the diagram. So keep it in your mind. The, in the examination, they won't give any diagram. Okay. Next deflection due to precess. So deflection due to precess. We know the formula. What is the formula? Delta P is equal to minus 0.958 P E A square divided by E A. So under this type of cable profile. this is the formula this is the important formula okay so substitute all the values we know uh, p value and e value uh, so here in that precessing force you no need to convert uh, kilo newton into newton that is not required so we must concentrate on mm or meter only so finally we have to substitute all the values in terms of mm So 0.958 into 560 into eccentricity at middle is 100 and the area, sorry, not area. A is nothing but the this value, 10 by 3. That means that uh, one third portion. Okay. So where uh, that cable bends, so it is uh, 10 by 3 the whole square divided by E A. Okay. E is 35 into I value into 5 into 10 power 8. So therefore, uh, the upward deflection is minus thirty four point zero six mm. Okay. Next deflection due to non permanent load.
So uh, due to this cable profile, the deflection due to pre-stress is delta P is equal to minus 0 0.958 PE A squared divided by A. So here A is nothing but that uh, one third uh, of the span, that means 10 by 3. So now substitute delta P is equal to minus 0 0.958. And what is the precessing force? Here they, the question they given 560 kilo Newton into eccentricity. Eccentricity at mid span is 100 mm. And A, A is 10 by 3. It is given in um, meter. You substitute into mm. The whole square divided by EA. E is 35 and I value. I value is also given in the question. Okay. So because they didn't give the size of the beam. Without size of the beam, we can't find out the uh, moment of inertia. Okay. If size is given means you have to put BDQ by 12. Okay. So size of the beam is not given. So moment of inertia, they are given in the question. So substitute that value here. So we already know the deflection due to precessing force always minus it acting upward. So minus 34.06 mm is the deflection due to precess only. So next. Coming to deflection due to non-permanent load. Okay. So here there are permanent load is there, non-permanent load is there. Okay. So in the question, they clearly mention 60 percentage of the load, which is non-permanent. Okay. So the total load, that means the total live load is 5 kN per meter. Okay, it is given in the question. So out of this 5 kN meter, 50-60 percentage of the load is non-permanent and 40 percentage load is permanent. Okay, so we can see here 60 percentage. So 60 divided by 100, 60 divided by 100 into 5, which is equal to 3 kN per meter. Okay, and this is your non-permanent load. So sometimes this load will act. Sometimes this load will not act. That is called a non-permanent load. Permanent load means, so out of this uh, 5, 5 kN meter, 3 kN per meter is non-permanent. 2 kN per meter is permanent. So that the 2 kN per meter is the, it is a permanent load. Okay, always acting. But this 3 kN per meter is, sometimes it is acting. Okay, it's not a permanent one. Sometimes it will act on the beam. So 60, 60 percentage into 5, we got 3 kN per meter. So we know the deflection formula. So since it is the UDL load, 3 kN per meter is the UDL load. So what is the deflection formula? We know that 5 by 384 into WL power 4 divided by EA. Okay. So substitute the, all the values. So this 3 kN per meter, you substitute into kN per mm. So divided by 1000. This is your W. Okay, This is your W. And uh, multiply by L by 4 divided by EA. So we got uh, a downward uh, deflection of 22.32 mm. 22.32 mm. Next, deflection due to permanent load. Okay. So we already know Okay, what is the permanent load? Permanent load is nothing but uh, dead load only. Okay, so for that we have to calculate the self weight. We have to calculate the self weight. So what is the self weight of the beam? So since area is given, you can see here area is given. So area multiplied by 24 divided by 10 power 6. Why this 10 power 6? See area is given in mm square. You have to convert it into meter square because we need the load, UDL load in terms of kilonewton per meter. So therefore, 5.5 into 10 power 4 into density of the concrete, kilonewton per meter cube, 24 divided by 10 power 6. So we got 1.32 kilonewton per meter. So this is your dead load, sulfide. So permanent load per meter. So 1.32 also a permanent load plus we already know that means 
uh, already in 5 percentage, 60 percentage is uh, we already calculated for non permanent flow. So, again, 5 minus 3, that means 40 percentage. 40 percentage of 5, how much? It is 2. 40 percentage of 5 is 2 kilonewton per meter. So, 2 plus this 1.32, 2 plus 1.32. Students, the line. Okay, so now we will continue. The permanent load is 1.32. This is due to self height and 40 balance 40 percentage of 5 kilonewton per meter also permanent load. So that value is 2. So 2 plus 1.32, we got 3.32 kilonewton per meter. Okay. So now tell me what is the mid span deflection due to permanent load? It is 5 by 384. 5 by 384 into WL power 4 divided by E because this also yeah UDL load. So 5 by 384 into 3.32 divided by 1000. So I converted kilonewton per meter into kilonewton per mm. Okay. So into uh, L, power, L power 4 divided by EA value. So we got 24.7 mm downward. 24.7 mm downward. Okay. So what are the deflection values we found so we found three deflection values first one is deflection due to pre-stress deflection due to pre-stress this is equation uh, the answer number one next deflection due to non-permanent load this is answer number two next deflection due to permanent loads this is answer number three okay so now short term deflection when non-permanent load is acting okay when non-permanent load is acting so summation of all these three so minus 34.06 this is due to precessing force and 22.32 this is due to non-permanent load and 24.7 this is due to permanent load so what is the total uh, deflection downward deflection 12.96 mm okay when permanent load is acting Okay, when permanent load is acting, so minus 34.06 plus this 24.7 only. That means pre-stress plus non-permanent load. Okay, so we found three types of deflections. One is pre-stress, second non-permanent load deflection, third permanent deflection. Okay. So, if non-permanent load is acting means we have to add all the three. We have to add all the three deflection answers. Okay. So, if only permanent load is acting. Suppose, uh, if you consider a metro train. Metro trains moving in a precious concrete beam. Okay. So, metro train is not a permanent load. Okay. So within one minute or two minutes, it cross the beam. Okay. At that time, we have to consider the non-permanent load also. So consider this is the deflection due to metro train crossing. Due to the metro train crossing. Okay. So this deflection, 22.32. Okay. So it is, a, it is not a permanent load. It is like a live load. It's just a crossed. Okay, so but uh, the rails sleepers, rails sleepers, that electric poles. Okay, so this is all permanent one. Okay, rails sleepers uh, that uh, aggregates under that electric poles. So, so this is all permanent one. So the metro train here, you assume that that metro train is three kilonewton per meter, and the sleepers rails and all weight is uh, 2 kilonewton per meter. So when non-permanent load is acting, that means when the metro train crossed the precious concrete beam, precious concrete girder, we have to include that metro train deflection also. That means non-permanent load deflection. So we got 12.96 mm because due to huge weight, the deflection is downward because you know the metro train, the entire metro train weight. Okay. Next, when permanent load is acting, only per, so then uh, after that, uh, after few seconds, the metro train crossed. So now what happened? It's, it is free. There is no non-permanent load. 
only permanent load and self weight only and pre stress okay so therefore under that condition we have to neglect this 22.32 we have to neglect that 22.32 okay so what is the value we got minus 9.36 you can see here the deflection is upward so when met, due to the metro train load deflection is downward when metro train crossed the deflection is upward okay so slightly the variation is around uh, 2. Point, uh, how much 12.96 12.96 minus 9.36 okay so around 3.6 mm only the difference is around 3.6 mm upward okay so these are all the important points you have to note down okay students okay so today we will end the class because uh, already time 11 uh, 28 okay so if you have any doubt means you can ask me now so i'll raise the question this is the seventh problem a rectangular beam 250 mm into 500 mm is pre-stressed with 1200 mm square so it consists of two cables of 600 mm square each of height and cell wise. The beam is of span 10 meter. Okay, the span of the beam is 10 meter. And the stress in pre-stress steel is 1200 Newton per mm square. Okay, calculate the initial deflection of the beam due to pre-stress, dead load and live load of 25 kilo Newton per meter. If Actually, what they are asking initial deflection due to pre stress, dead load, and live load. Okay, live load also given. So, the condition is what is the condition is if the cable is straight with constant eccentricity 120 mm. This is first case. Suppose the cable is parabolic with an eccentricity of 1200 mm at mid span and zero eccentricity at the ends. So, students, here we have to draw two diagrams, two type of diagrams. One is the cable is a straight cable. You can see the first diagram. You can see the cable. The cable is a uniform eccentricity. Uniform eccentricity in the sense it is a straight cable having 120 mm eccentricity. You can see here 120 mm. So next is the cable is parabolic. Okay, the cable is second condition. The cable is parabolic. Actually, this diagram is not there. Okay, so the cable is parabolic means, okay, it should like this. Okay, it's a parabolic cable. So under this two conditions, so same eccentricity at mid span and zero eccentricity at the end. So under this condition, we have to calculate the deflection. So let us see which cables provides this deflection, either straight cable or yeah, parabolic cable. I think the answers you already know. So let us see. So first we have to calculate the self weight per meter. So what do you have to calculate self weight of the beam? So here they are given size of the beam. You can see size of the beam 250 mm into 500 mm. This is the size of the beam. So 0.25 into 0.5 into 1 into 24. 1 is nothing but for 1 meter. Kilo Newton per meter. Okay. So, 3 kilo Newton per meter. So, always we have to calculate per meter only. Okay. Per meter is nothing but 1 meter. So, the self weight is 3 kilo Newton per meter. UDL load is acting. Okay. Next, moment of inertia. So, I is equal to BD cube by 12. So, B is 250 and D is uh, 500 cube divided by 12. So, the answer is 2.6 into 10 power 9 mm power four okay so this is the schematic diagram of the beam okay 25 kilo newton meter is the external live load so now deflection due to self weight so we, we need to calculate three types of deflection first one is deflection due to self weight deflection due to pre stress and deflection due to live load so first condition i am taking straight cable okay the first condition i am taking straight cable so what is the deflection due to self weight formula? So we already know. So in case of your simply supported beam, carries UDL load throughout the deflection 
formula is 5 by 3 84 into W L power 4 divided by E I. Okay, this is the deflection formula. So 5 divided by 3 84 into what is W? So W is the self height. You can see 3 kilo Newton per meter. Okay, so that 3 kilo Newton per meter you have to convert it into kilo Newton per mm. So 3 divided by 1000. So multiply by L power 4. L, L is nothing but length of the beam is, is 10,000 power 4 divided by EI. So E is 35 and I is 2.6 into 10 power 9. Okay. So that uh, I also we already found. So deflection due to self height is equal to 4.29 mm downward. Okay. So next pre-stressing force. So next we have to calculate deflection due to pre-stress. So if the cable is straight means what is the formula? It is minus PE L square divided by 8 EI. This is the formula. So here E we know, I, L we know, E we know and I also we know. So except this P. So P it is not given in the question. You can see that P is given, processing force not given. So first we have to calculate the processing force. For that purpose they are given area and stress in the cable. So stress into area, we have to multiply stress and the area. Stress into area, we can get the stress into area, we can get the processing force. So 1200 into 1200 divided by 1000. So we got 1440 kilo Newton. Okay, this is the so now, processing force P is equal to stress in the area. That means 1200 into 1200, uh, which gives the uh, processing force in, in terms of Newton. Okay. So, divided by 1000 means it is converted into kilo Newton. Okay. So, therefore, deflection due to process minus PE L squared divided by ADA. So, therefore, Deflection due to processing force is equal to minus 1440. So, this is the amount of processing force. Okay. So, minus 1440 into eccentricity <coughs> 120 into L square. L square is 10,000 square divided by 8 into EA. Okay. So, this is deflection due to process. So, we know that deflection due to process always upward. Okay, so minus and symbol also upward direction. Okay, next deflection due to live load. Coming to deflection due to live load, the formula is since it is the UDL load is acting, the formula is 5 by 384 into WL power 4 divided by EA. So, what is the UDL load intensity? You can see in the question UDL load intensity it is 25. You can see UDL load intensity is 20. So, we have to substitute W is equal to 25 divided by 1000. I converted kilo Newton per M. Okay. So, 5 by 384 into W. This is live load. So, 25 divided by 1000 into L power 4 divided by EA. So, therefore, deflection is 35.75 M downward. Okay. So, always self height that means dead load deflection and live load deflection is acting downward only because load is acting downward but pre-stress deflection is upward so now tell me what is the short term deflection net deflection is so self height due to deflection due to self height deflection due to live load minus deflection due to pre-stressing force so therefore 4.29 you can see 4.29 and uh, 35.75 and minus 23.74. So these are all the final answers. So finally we got 16.3 mm downward. 16.3 mm downward. This is the short term deflection. Okay. So finally the deflection is acting downward. Okay. So the cable is parabolic with an eccentricity 120 mm. So now Coming to second case, so previous case, the cable is straight, 
so the pre stress deflection due to pre stress formula is different now the cable is parabolic so the only change is this formula deflection due to pre stress since it is the parabolic cable so the formula is 5 by 48 into pe l square divided by ea okay so the cable is parabolic with an eccentricity 120 mm so instead of straight cable parabolic cable the deflection is minus 19.78 minus 19.78 so therefore deflection due to self height plus deflection due to libo deflection due to pre stress in case of parabolic cable which is equal to the summation of 4.29 plus 35.75 Minus 19.78, we got 20.26 mm downward. 20.26 mm downward. So this is the problem. Okay, students. So any doubt, students? You can ask me now. So in the eighth problem, a beam size is given 125 mm into 250 mm. Is pre-stressed by a parabolic cable and the eccentricity, middle eccentricity, midpoint eccentricity is given, uh, 60 mm, and at a support eccentricity is zero. Okay, the pre-stressing force is 450 kilonewton directly they given. Okay, the span of the beam is 10 meter. The loss in pre-stress is 20 percentage, so 20 percentage loss. Determine the central deflection of the beam. Okay. So central deflection in the sense at mid span, what is the maximum deflection? Okay. Next, under the what are the condition? Only we have to consider self height and pre-stressing force. This is the first case. Second case, self height, pre-stressing force, and lie load of three kilonewton per meter. This is the second case. And the third case, cracking load. Okay. So the modulus of rupture is four newton per mm square. And the EC, Young's modulus. EC is nothing but Young's modulus of concrete. And in case of uh, ES, they given means Young's modulus of steel. So Young's modulus of concrete EC is equal to 30 picanewton per mm square. Okay. So uh, let us do step by step. So first, to draw the diagram. You can see the diagram. Size is given 125 mm into 250 mm. Understand 10 meter. The cable is a parabolic cable having 450 kilonewton at the end and 60 mm. So first, calculate the area. That means area is nothing but area of the cross section, 125 into 250. And the self height of the beam, 0.125 into 0.25 into 1 into 24. Okay, 24 is the density of the concrete. So we got 0.75 kilonewton per meter. Okay. So next, I. I is we know the formula, B D Q by 12. So B is 125 and D is 250 cube divided by 12. Therefore I is 162.76 into 10 into 6 mm power 4. So next is that B. So why we calculate is that B? Before means uh, actually is that B is used to for calculating the cracking load. Okay, at which load the beam will crack? Okay, so. The formula is B D square by six section minus formula for the rectangular section. Okay, so it is 125 into 250 square by six. It is 1.3 into 10 power six mm power q. Okay, so next we will start our session. What is the first condition they are asking? Deflection due to self height and deflection due to pre stress. Okay, so first deflection due to self height. So what is the deflection due to self height? What is the deflection? A uh, self-weight load they given it is point seven five, point seven five. Okay, so five by three eighty four into W L power four divided by E A. So five by three eighty four W W is point seven five. The given we found in kilonewton per meter. So we have to convert kilonewton per mm. So zero point seven five into thousand. So multiply by L power four divided by E I. Okay, so L is ten thousand power four, and E is thirty five, and I is one sixty two point seven six into ten power six. So these are the parameters we already found. So we got the self height of the deflection is seventeen point one four mm. Next, coming to deflection due to pre stress. 
So deflection due to pre stress is minus pi Pe L square divided by 48 degree. Since the cable is, it's not a straight cable, it's a parabolic cable. You can see the diagram, the cable is parabolic cable. So the formula is minus pi by 48 Pe L square divided by E. So substitute the value minus pi into P value is 450. So you can write in terms of kilonewton only, no problem. Okay, so into E value is 60 mm and L is 10,000 square divided by 48 EA. So the deflection downward, sorry, uh, here uh, they mentioned wrong, it is upward deflection. So please correct, it is upward deflection. So it is minus, it's mentioned minus. So service load on the beam. Okay, so the net. Uh, deflection so we have to calculate using the service load service load condition okay so service load on the beam is 0.75 plus 3 so 0.75 is nothing but sulfide okay sulfide and 3 what is 3 3 is nothing but the live load okay first we found all the parameters after that we will find the deflection of each parameter. Okay. So deflection due to service load is 5 by 384 into 3.75 divided by 1000 into L power 4 divided by EA. Okay. So therefore, it is 35.72 mm downward. So since we are adding only uh, sulfide and live load, so the, the net downward deflection is 85.72. Okay. So next, how to calculate service load moment? So we know the maximum bending moment formula W L square by eight. Okay. So W is thirty five point seven five and L square is ten square divided by eight. So we got forty six point eight eight kilonewton meter is the maximum bending moment. Okay. In that. Next stress at the bottom due to free stress. So why we need for stress? See for the actual stress is zero minus zero point nine newton per mm square. But it take care of the flexural strength of we can see it take care of the maximum flexural strength of four newton per mm square. Okay. So for that purpose we need to calculate what is the actual stress is produced. So for that, uh, we know the formula P by A plus PE divided by ZB minus MG plus MQ divided by ZB. So MG is nothing but dead load moment and MQ is the live load moment. So both we calculated already. That is called uh, MG plus MQ is 46.88 kilonewton meter. So substitute all the values, P value, A value, ZB value, uh, everything in this formula. So we got minus 0 0.9 Newton per mm square. This is the stress due to uh, stress at the bottom fiber. Free stress plus working load. Okay. So now extra tensile stress at bottom fiber for uh, cracking stress of 4 Newton per mm square. Actually, the beam will take care maximum 4 Newton per mm square. Flexural strength. But uh, actual stress produced is uh, minus 0 0.9 Newton per mm square. So what is the net value? So balanced uh, balance extra tensile stress, it is 4 minus 0 0.9. So it is uh, 3.1 Newton per mm square. Okay, 3.1 Newton per mm square. This is the extra stress. So the extra moment required to cause above tensile stress. So M is equal to F into S, stress into uh, section modulus. So F is equal to 3.1. This is the stress, extra stress. So into Z value is BD squared by 6. So that uh, we already found BD squared by 6. It is, so since it is uh, in uh, mm square, it is in mm square. So you have to convert it into meter square. So for that purpose only here I put uh, 10 power 6. Okay, 10 power 6. 
So I convert the mm square into meter square. So we have to put divided by 10 power 6. So finally, the moment that means extra moment is 4.04 kilonewton meter. So therefore, cracking moment. So cracking moment is nothing but working moment plus extra moment. Okay. So what is our working moment? You can see working moment we already found here. Working moment. So it is 46.88 kilonewton meter. Okay. So this is actual moment in the beam, but the moment capacity, the max, uh, the beam carries maximum moment capacity of 50.92 kilonewton meter. Okay. So maximum the beam withstand 50.92, but uh, the available moment, working moment is only 46. Okay. So we found maximum capacity, moment capacity of the beam. So from that tracking load is W tracking load into L square divided by 8. Okay. So W into L square is 10 square divided by 8. So from that tracking load is equal to 50.92 into, into 8 divided by 10 square. So we got 4 kilonewton per meter. 4 kilonewton per meter. So this is the cracking load. Okay. So next deflection due to cracking load is 5 by 384 into 4 divided by 1000. Since it is kilonewton per meter, you convert it into kilonewton per mm. So this is your W into L power 4 divided by EA. We got 91.42 mm. 91.42 mm. So this is the deflection due to cracking load. Okay, students. So actually in the beam, so how much load is acting? Three kilonewton per meter load is only acting. Three kilonewton per meter, it is live load plus dead load is 0.75. So three plus 0.75 plus dead load is 0.75 kilonewton per meter is the actual load. Okay, so but the beam will withstand up to 4 kilonewton per meter, up to 4 kilonewton per meter. This is the tracking load. So under 3.75 kilonewton per meter, uh, the load will not, uh, sorry, crack will not happen. So when it crossed to 4 kilonewton per meter, so that only we found, you can see here, the cracking moment, based on the cracking moment 50.92, we calculate the cracking load. So it is uh, 4 kilometer per meter. When it is crossed to 4, suppose the beam uh, will cross to 4, 4.1, 4.2, like that means definitely crack will happen at the bottom of the beam. Okay, students. So is it clear? So this uh, eighth pro seventh problem and the eighth problems are very, very important. Okay, because most of the uh, JNT question paper, they asked this type of problem only. Okay, students. So if you have any doubt means feel free to ask now.